Yo, so here I am sitting with the blue half of my face and a red half of my face. It's CJ. And uh, yeah, uh, why am I sitting like this? Because I'm enjoying these new lights I just put in. Uh, anyway, so uh, I have been uh, playing, uh, playing around with learning multiple instruments for some time now. Uh, not like a lifetime or anything like that, but enough that I enjoy it. Uh, and so I decided if I ever do a, a project or a, um, uh, if I ever uh, start a band or something like that, here's the name. It's going to be CJ and the Notifications or just the Notifications. And uh, yeah. And then if it's just a solo project, it would be CJ. And then the uh, project would be an EP uh, called The Notifications. And, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so, that's my life. Actually, I really had fun today. Uh, it's uh, April 2nd now in 2022. So, copyright that name, CJ and The Notifications. The Notifications, or CJ with an album titled uh, The Notifications. But you don't know. I mean, it's, it's not ever really. But who knows? Maybe like one of these days, somebody will say, Hey, uh, we need someone to come play in the corner of this bar. And I can call together a couple of guys and we can do like some R&B stuff. And it would be The Notifications. So, um, all fantasy put aside. Uh yeah, it's a uh, copyright that stuff. Cause I just googled it. I cannot find any sort of band called the Notifications. Um, actually, my first uh, inclination would be the Notations, but there is a band called the Notations. I know because I researched it, and I did research, and there is not right now. Uh, a band that I could find called The Notifications. And so if that band gets taken later on, uh, that, that name gets taken later on, unbeknownst to me, and then I start a band uh, and uh, uh, the project is The Notifications, I will have a claim to that because it's a pretty kick-ass uh, name for a... Uh, what I would want to do, which was would be kind of a... Uh, uh, kind of a blend of R and B and doo wop and folk, and uh, with it with a trippy kind of spin on it. It's a sound that's that's kind of a uh, retro, uh, blending that R and B, uh, doo wopiness with some uh, um, you know, a little bit of a. A little bit of psychedelic flair, you know. Uh, so yeah, and it's been it's 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 been done in different variations from different bands in the past. Um, uh, the indic the indications is a uh, a band right now. Uh, the Durant Jones and the Indications uh, that they're uh, touring with. Um, Greta Van Fleet. So I've recently become aware of them because I looked I looked at what they had going on because they're going to be opening for this tour that I'm going to go to uh, see and it's going to be pretty cool. So yeah, that's kind of like, you know what, what they're doing, I could do that. I mean, I, I can play uh, well enough to do that. I actually got to do something that I didn't, that I haven't done in a long time. In a former uh, um, iteration in a previous form of the matrix, uh, I was a stylist. Uh, I know it's hard to believe since, you know, this, but I, w I was, I was a, uh, I was, I was a great style, a stylist. I spent, uh, many years to learn how to become really, really good. And then, uh, I mean, I really didn't do a lot with it after that. I sort of got, uh, to my, to my summit of where I was. And then it was like, you know, uh, 
this industry is changing and my heart's not really in the industry anymore. So I don't necessarily want to keep pursuing this. And, uh, you know, so it was, I, I don't know. My, yeah. So a lot of stuff converged at once, but my heart just really wasn't in it anymore. And I really got tired of the, uh, uh, the free hair jobs, you know, uh, I was going to say free head jobs, but really it's free hair, you know, free haircuts, free. And so every once in a while, I'll get the opportunity to uh, put my skills to use. Uh, but I don't work enough to really consider going uh, professional. But today I did uh, this really, really awesome. Uh, I had this great opportunity. It was really fun and invigorating. And it was this uh, uh, teen girl, mid-teens uh you know, high school and everything like that. And a friend of mine, I've known her since she was like, you know, pre-adolescent. You know what I mean? Like, like, uh, yeah, she, she must have been about four years old when I first met her, four or five years old, this little girl. Anyway, beautiful toe-headed blonde child, you know, and I get to watch these kids grow up in my life and have fun just being friends of the family and, and uh, it's kind of cool. You know, so... So basically, I've known her almost her entire life. Uh, so I felt comfortable uh, taking on this job. I'm, I was to take this blonde-haired child that had a dark rinse on her hair uh, to take her natural, beautiful blonde hair, and she kind of like went kind of like uh, dark with it. And that's, you know, that's fine. You want to play around with color and everything. Well, so she'd done that, but today uh, she wanted blue. So, and it had been a while, uh, and mostly what I do with, with something like that, what you really have to do, especially with blue, blue in particular, there's really only one way, uh, to get blue and you have got to, uh, have a, a spray or something that, that is so blue that it's blue, 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 and you can spray it on temporary and everything. And if your hair uh, isn't too dark. It'll kind of show up or whatever. But the best thing to do is to, for me, is to totally lighten the hair. Now, this was uh, a child. Well, she wasn't a child. I still think of her as a child. But she's, uh, she's about 16 years old, I guess, or 15, whatever. I don't know. But anyway, you have to take the, uh, the artificial color that she had on, had to, had to, Lighten that completely out of her hair, and it's and in that process, it opened up the uh, it opened up the uh, uh, the cuticle of, of the hair follicle, which is the outside of the hair, and you want to you want to you know it's very delicate. It's a very delicate situation. Uh, I I put her with a uh, lightener and we lightened it. I I didn't have her go more than like thirty five minutes with this lightener, and even then, it was a bit. Uh, tough, you know what I mean? Because as much as you try to, there's specks of this stuff that maybe as you're lifting and oxidizing through the hair, there's the occasional bit that maybe, especially in a home process, that may touch your scalp or whatever. And it's like, I wanted to reduce that as much as possible. So, um, yeah. So I've lightened her up and then we put a permanent toner on her all over but um, it, it didn't take entirely evenly. It did really, really well. But what happens with this is that ev even you're putting blue onto uh, golden yellow hair, you're going to get some sort of tealish, greenish color. You're not really going to get blue, blue, blue. But I was able to lay that foundation down and there were there were parts of it it was enough that i knew that yes indeed the next step was going to give me some blue and what we decided to do was go back and get a more intense blue uh from uh my supplier uh, uh and basically uh we went with an intense uh with an intense blue and, and an intense azure blue uh and i put Large amounts. I left no room for, uh, like I super saturated each hair follicle all the way through. 
and we left it on. It, uh, it's a semi-permanent this time. Uh, semi-permanent on top of permanent equals nearly permanent. So what would be uh, a 10-week process, maybe, uh, or maybe I should say a 20 shampoo process until it, you know, until it gradually fades, gradual growth. But with this, we took a semi-permanent process and we put it immediately over uh, a permanent process where the cuticles were still open and everything like that. And so that's kind of going to bond this and it's kind of make it, yes, it's still going to be a semi-permanent process, but it's going to last a lot longer so that maybe lasting the duration of like, uh, a month of shampoos maybe we'll get her through a, a month and a half to two months you know so we can sort of reduce and then from that now that we started and I told us if you want to keep this that's fine um, and I will regularly be their their families we, we like for the heck of it I enjoy doing it it saves them money and they can just throw whatever kind of uh, stuff at me they want to or whatever and that's fine uh, so what I decide, you know, is the, the arrangement is this, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be, I'm, uh, for one thing, I'm not licensed, so I'm not actually charging money, but like, hey, if you want to gift me things, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, that's cool too, you know, for the time, not for the service, but for the time, uh, that's cool. But I enjoy doing it and I enjoy spending time and everything, but I think that, Money part is a good boundary so that it keeps me from feeling like I'm always on call because this is a family that has like, uh, you know, the father, uh, uh, the wife, and then uh, three teenage children. Uh, there's a mother-in-law and then there is a... Uh, 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 there's another relative that's with them sometimes or whatever, or whatever. And it's like, you know, there's enough of them that, you know, it'll, you know, periodically when I get, when I, when they want to do a little something creative, I don't mind doing it. You know, I, I really enjoy this. And because, you know, what I'm going to, friends and family and stuff like that, it's like, you know, if I ever get around to doing enough hair where I could go back in business, sure. You know, then I would consider, uh, uh, Reobtaining uh, my license uh, uh, to practice, uh, although at first it would have to be a, a you know, a, a student license, then I'd have to go through all the channels, but still, uh, or a learner's license or whatever, whatever, you're, whatever it is in your state. Where, but, but for the most part, just right now, it's just, you know, uh, I, I, I'll accept the money because it keeps me from being like a, how I felt like maybe like a, I want to say twenty years ago when I when I was really heavily into it and I spent a lot of time, uh, and and a lot of money and I invested a lot of, um, I actually uh, prolonged my my school, uh, so that I could get more access to the education part of it, so. Uh, yeah, I, I, and plus I was, I was uh, working, so I was a part-time student also, but I, but I did do a lot of style shows and everything. And then after that, I did, um, I did work in a couple of local salons as I was uh, working to pay off some student loans and everything, but, but and it was, it wasn't the money. It's just that the industry all of a sudden changed from the eighties Going into the 90s, nobody wanted permanent waves anymore. Nobody wanted uh, hairstyles anymore. They wanted color, and they still want color. Uh, but there's not that much that goes on. I mean, what goes on is like, do I want a short haircut, long haircut, uh, bangs, and do I want uh, short layers or long layers, you know, uh, or no layers, you know, uh, or any variation in between, you know, a graduation or an increase. There's only like four basic types of cut, according to uh, 
the pivot point method of hair cutting, which is a blunt cut straight across. There is a, a, a layer where you start with longer layers in the back back here, and they gradually get shorter as you get towards the bang. Uh, there's, there's, then there's the cut where it's like really, really long at the bang, and then gradually get shorter as you get to the back of the head form. Uh, and that is a, a it's a, it's a, uh, the first is called a, a graduation, uh, and the second one would be kind of like an increased layer where the, where the layers just kind of like increasingly get longer as you move back away from, from the, from the bangs. So it's like, uh, yeah, so the graduation, your diagonal forward or which is kind of like where it starts short and it's either a diagonal cut or kind of rounded and gets gradually longer going towards the bangs. Uh, anything like that. Those are the, the, the emo cuts, the uh, when you when you're an emo and you grow up, but you still have a sassy attitude and you want to speak to the manager. That so uh, sometimes it's yeah you know, basically when you have my attitude, uh, you know then then those are your those are your uh, you know your stack bob cuts with with some layers that kind of get longer going towards the front and everything like that. There's variations on it, but there's really only four haircuts four basic haircuts and all other haircuts are blends of that in between. And, uh, so this, this, this young woman, she's beginning to become a young woman, uh, wanted a, a, a blue, a true blue hair color. Uh, and overall it came out maybe just a shade or so darker than the lighter blue. But because of the uh, semi-permanence of this process, within a week, uh, you know, uh, of a good uh, soapy shampoo, it's going to be right where she wants it to be. And it will stay there for approximately two weeks, <laughs> give or take, gradually getting lighter. And then, uh, and then when it's time for touch-ups, they'll call me over for things like that, so. Uh, and I, 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 I just really enjoy it. Uh, that was, oh my God, I haven't actually been a, a, a an official stylist stylist, uh, uh, since my twenties. And, um, well, let's just say, uh, if I say it was a lifetime ago, it was a lifetime ago, uh, I'm sitting in dim lighting now, you know. So, um, yeah, uh, it was cool. It was cool. Um, did I already talk about my band name, The Indications? Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm blessed to have, uh, to be able to look forward to this month. I'm going to see, I'm a new awakening for uh, guitar music, uh, so and I prefer heavier, harder music. But if there's like a slow, uh, mellow vibe, or if there's even just a jangle vibe, you know, jangle music kind of was inspired by Bob Dylan's, uh, or or the Birds version of Bob Dylan's music. Uh, hey, Mister Tam Tambourine Man, you know, jangle, jangle in the jingle, jangle world. You know, that kind of upbeat, upbeat, but mellow. That's, that's called the Django, the, the Django music, uh, Django, Jangle music and, uh, Jingle, Jingle. And then, so that's kind of, a. uh, so, so anyway, so I've got that from, uh, the Gin Blossoms. I'm going to go see those guys. And then of course I'm going to go see a classic, uh, classic rockers foreigner uh the week or so after that and then the following no the following month i get to go see uh dave matthews who's kind of got that jangle uh appeal also with that whole like uh 
maybe i don't know where he's based out of really i should check it out but he really kind of sort of has that uh california folk rock vibe going on uh with uh you know a lot of uh wind instruments and things like that so he's very you know he, he's he's one of those people that you really just can't peg except for to say adult contemporary music uh, uh, you know he got he plays a lot in adult uh, contemporary charts and venues um so but the big one that i have so far i were i was talking with the buddy about going to the austin city limits fair but that's 300 bucks a ticket. I just, it is three days worth it. Was, it would definitely be worth it, but I, that's a lot of money, you know, and realistically, I uh, have to save. I, I don't, I, I don't have just money to just pull out of thin air. I've got to like save for things like that. Um, so that's ten, that's uh, tentative. And I, I told him, we'll see who's playing. We'll see who's playing. And when I know who's playing, then I'll be able to make some sort of, uh, decision on that because three hundred dollars just like dude like that's something I, I would i could only do if someone bought the ticket and i paid them off like maybe like 50 75 bucks a month until it was paid off but i couldn't do just three hundred dollars all at one time that's i know that's not an extreme amount of money but it is really because uh, on top of that i have to think about okay well then now i've got to uh come up with uh, staying in a room. Uh, you know, so just think about lodging and, uh, you know, uh, things like that. You know, those little, all extra little things that you don't think about so much. Uh, so going away for a night to see Greta Van Fleet in November is not the same as going away for half a week. Uh, you know, uh, but I will consider it. I will consider it. We'll see who's playing. Do I want to make the sacrifice? I don't know. I know that it's fun to enjoy. Um, it's fun to enjoy shows, uh, concerts, and everything like that. But uh, and it's but but I, but as much as I would love to run away and join the circus, uh, I have I have a home life. Uh, even if I'm here just at home and I live here by myself. This is essentially my little apartment, my little suite of, of rooms, but I live right down the street from my sister. And so we don't live in the same house, but we live close enough that, that you know, we're close and we're family. So I can't just like run off. My dad lives in town, my nephews and things like that. So I really appreciate, I really appreciate um, having a family. It'd be It'd be one thing if I didn't have a family if I were so far removed from family. Um, I, I talk a lot to people uh, about family, not just my family, but I do a lot of listening to people about their family. What I can tell you is this, uh, whatever the situation is, good or bad or whatever, uh, even if you have to, even if you have to work with some sort of guard or protection or whatever never let an opportunity pass by to make amends or restitution wherever or to accept amends or a restitution even even if you have to keep those healthier safer i should say uh, boundaries up I don't, I don't mean to be judgmental when i say healthier i think there's there's a connotation that comes with that word sometimes that, that means, what do you mean I'm unhealthy, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, sometimes uh, a person doesn't have to be unhealthy in order to be unhealthy in a certain dynamic. To, to a certain dynamic that mean that mean that that mean that I'm unhealthy it just means that the trigger that I bring to this particular dy dynamic whether I mean to or not that can be if I can't adjust myself to that certain set of boundaries that can be triggering uh, for certain parties uh, but that's not to say that I am intentionally a trigger you know what I mean so it's you know what I mean it's sometimes people have chemistry where they work well and they can they can uh, be neutralized and, and solvent and then sometimes people can't and uh, 
whenever they get together, they have to take caution not to be volatile, you know, or whatever. So, um, but wherever possible, and I know that it's not always possible, but wherever possible, if you have uh, the opportunity to bond uh, with family, do that because, um, you, you know, you may not uh, get the opportunity to do that. Uh, my dad tells me that all the time. He's like, one of these days you'll call and I'm not going to be here. And I'm like, oh, you know. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's true. That's true. But that happens, you know. Uh, not not that it's like no big deal, but I mean, everybody is one of these days not going to be here. You know, uh, let's uh, let's uh, bond with each other uh, while we can without the uh, without the pressures. Yeah, and I'll probably give him a call tomorrow and I'm thinking about it. But uh, yeah, uh, what else can I say? If, yeah, if you have an opportunity, if you're distant, if you haven't, if you have loved ones that you haven't reached out with or whatever, um, don't don't forget to include them in in your thoughts and your life and and yeah and if you're waiting around for someone to make that first phone call uh it's okay if you're the one that makes the first phone call and then everyone so you maybe you'll be like nobody ever called well you know what if nobody ever calls do you uh, do you do you call or do you sit around waiting for people to call? Do I call or do I sit around waiting for people to call? I call, not nearly as much as I should, but I, I call out to friends and family. Text is more like it. I, I Facebook a lot less. Actually, I don't Facebook at all anymore. But that used to be kind of like okay. Yeah. So it used to be oh I'm on Facebook. Blah, 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 blah. If you you know we, we must say or greet each other twenty times a day on Facebook. That's not a realistic thing. So instead of Facebook, now I'm doing YouTube videos, which is very realistic to real life. Very true, because it's just me randomly talking about these things, uh, of which I'm thinking. And then, of course, as I'm, as I'm spitting out these thoughts that, that are meaningless, except, you know, for to me, uh, uh, it's being received by zero uh, followers. But, uh, but this isn't like a skill set thing. This is just my random little diary of thoughts or whatever. And I'm putting it out there. And if someone happens across it, great. Chances are it's not going to happen. Maybe when I uh, take some concert footage and I, I do a little uh, stuff like that. But I really don't have any YouTube followers. And that's fine. I don't really do this for followers. The things that I do. I would like for people to come visit my city of Shreveport that I talk about a lot. But primarily, I do the videos like this because it's kind of like, okay, these are just my random thoughts. And it's therapeutic. That's the truth of it. Okay, I love you guys. And you're not really there. But even if you happen upon this accidentally, I'll still love you. And uh, if you never know it and you never hear this, I still love you. And... Uh, God bless and good night.